Bills are having a great week to this point. Man, I can't believe Wednesday already. Time is definitely flying by. Um, look, this is going to be another brief segment. <coughs> Uh, but it's definitely something worth talking about. I'm probably going to have a little bit more on this topic as it develops, but it just definitely reaches into um, what I've been trying to share recently, but what I've been lecturing, teaching, sharing, um, and raging about for literally years. Um, you know, we've been having this ongoing discussion about um, the destructive force of individualism in uh, black America. Uh, you know the routine on the channel. If you if you like what you hear and see, click the like button. Uh, if it really moves you, click the share button and subscribe. For those of you who really support me and follow me and believe in what I do on a grand scale, I mean, so much happens outside of the little time I spend on these platforms talking. Uh, the work is being done when I'm not here. These are the places I come to uh, decompress, to release, to share, to teach uh, based off of what I'm discovering, what I'm doing, and what I'm seeing with my own eyes via empirical and pragmatic data, experiential observation, and everything else. Uh, the work is being done real live and in time, and I've been doing it for 30 years now, and I will continue to do it as long as there's breath in my body. Look, um, if you believe in that, look in the description box. Look at how you can donate and give, support the work we're doing, do it. Uh, I've been uh, talking about uh, the devastating force of individualism, the idea that we don't have to adhere to a collective code. Uh, I don't mean everybody needs to be the same. I don't mean that you don't explore your uniqueness. That's not what I'm talking about. Individualism in the sense that I am speaking is this idea that I'm not accountable to anyone else but myself and my desires. I don't have to adhere to any social code, any social uh, policies, any social agenda. I'm only worried about me. I want to make sure I get mine and whatever I've got to do to get mine and however I want to live my life ain't your business. And how that plays out in life and in the world. You know, we are so programmed as a people that we adhere to these erroneous concepts and ideas about how we're supposed to move, what we're supposed to do. Consumerism and everything else is driven by the messaging being sent out via media uh, through the dynamic of propaganda. And we are literally, I've said this before, uh, that facts mean nothing, uh, facts mean absolutely nothing to the conditioned mind. And it has been proven over and over again, consistently over time. And I have put out a wealth of, of work uh, that you can literally examine and look at and see exactly how this thing plays out. But we literally are programmed to the point that, um, and I've said this before, we are the only people in history that not only starve our progress, but finance our demise. We constantly spend into an economy run by and controlled by the very ones we say are oppressing us. And we do this at an unbelievably pressing rate uh, in depth. And simultaneously, we withhold any support of any significance for the ones who are fighting to liberate our minds, liberate our bodies, create platforms for us to actually develop, grow, and uh, embrace power that we've never experienced before. We don't support that, but we will pour into retail. We'll pour into travel. We'll, we'll pour into all of that and brag about what we're doing and then complain on the back end when there's nothing there to insulate us from the assaults of the very ones we're enriching with our conditioned and programmed behavior. 
man th then here today there's a story floating around and i think it started yesterday i could be wrong i'm still uh gathering information on it but three kids robbed a well fargo and when i say three kids the oldest is 16 the other two are 11 and 12 two are black one is most likely Caucasian, can't really make it out. And of course, now that they've caught him, they're not showing any more pictures of him. So it's probably, you probably won't get to see any more photos of the kids. The, the ones that they're showing are the ones they released before they caught him. They needed people to be able to identify him. Um, they've got all three. Again, 11. Now, there are a bunch of different things that could be behind what actually happened here from anywhere from them actually getting it in their heads that's what they're gonna do to some adult using them because they're kids and they're gonna get ultimately a lot less time for doing the same thing than an adult would except for that 16 year old who could be easily classified as an adult especially here in houston in texas they will classify your ass especially if you're the wrong color. And I'm, I'm assuming that the oldest kid is one of the black kids just looking at what I was able to observe. I could be wrong. Uh, the older kid could be the other kid, but didn't look like it. But anyway, my thing is this whole idea of liberated thinking, and, and I'm not talking about liberating your mind from constructs. I'm talking about liberal thinking in the ways that I can do whatever I want to, how I want to. Uh, I don't have to adhere to any traditional social constructs. I can venture away from it. The old fashioned traditional things don't work anymore. We've evolved, we've come out of it and not tracking how the corresponding consequences align with this deviation from what we call uh, traditionalism. Um, there are certain things you are supposed to improve upon. You, you know, if your parents were abusive, you're not, not supposed to be abusive. And so, but you are supposed to teach your kids accountability. You are supposed to hold them accountable. You're not supposed to be at school defending them and fighting teachers because they were actually uh, held accountable for something they actually did wrong. Uh, that's not teaching them accountability. And trust me, the system will gladly teach them for you uh, if you won't. And they will not have any concern in the world about what happens to them in the process. So, again, I'm trying to get us to understand that this isn't a one-off thing. This is a microcosm of something that has become prevalent in our community, prevalent in our society, and that is kids doing things that kids never, even a judge who, uh, well, a retired judge who was interviewed about this uh, said that in his entire career, he hasn't seen kids this young do something as excessive. Kids do things, you know, I've been kids who have shot somebody, whatever, but coming together in an organized fashion and literally getting together to rob a bank at 11 and 12, even with a 16 year old uh, leading the charge, is it's, it's, it's an extremely unusual thing, but it's an increasing problem of youth not having any sense of severity in killing somebody and robbing somebody and committing a crime that alters their life are now in situations and spaces where they are doing it on a more and more frequent uh, basis. And we are constantly talking about giving them more freedom in their thoughts and their thinking instead of establishing a set of guidelines and rules. And, 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 and with these, these are all boys. So then there have to be men present. And I'm real big on this, have to be men present. It's hard to do this in the black community without a concerted effort because there are 1.5 million black men missing. Guess where 1.3 of them are? Prison. So you got 1.3 in prison and because they're in prison, it opens a gateway and a pathway for more to flow uninhibited into the prison pipeline because there's no structure in their environment. Why? Because the men aren't there. And, and Again, I'm not here to assault my women. I love my sisters, man. Nothing uh, nothing shakes me 
like a black woman. And I, and I, when I say shakes me, I don't mean in a negative way. I mean really triggers my vibration uh, like a black woman. I have no desire to be with anything other than a sister. But what I got to tell you is we've got to learn our roles. We've got to learn, as men and women, we've got to learn where we belong, what our lane is. And yes, for a lot, for a long time, a lot of our sisters were put in positions where they had to try to cover two roles. And then they were praised for doing it and they made it a good thing. They kept talking about, you know, black girl magic and strong black woman. But every time I heard those terms, it was a black woman doing something that she shouldn't have to do. It was a black woman doing something that was outside of the scope of what she's really truly designed for. So therefore pulling her out of the space of her exceptional and extraordinary gifting to perform something a man should be there performing and they were praising it but it was destroying her it was breaking her it was bringing her down it was causing her to die early it was uh increasing her risk for breast cancer ovarian cancer and other forms of cancer it was doing all these things i talked about these studies and and and, and, and everybody gets upset because what now the idea is i, I like the, the idea of strong black woman but it's killing you because, and, and, and the thing is, I have no problems. Black women are strong. But what, anytime that you're talking about something and the very core foundation principle isn't present, you have to ask yourself why. Okay, in the times of talking about strong black women, show me the married women who were included in that conversation. They weren't. Why? Because the whole idea of being a strong black woman is being a single woman doing uh, the job of the husband and wife uh, to the best of your ability. And there's no way you can do it because it's a two person job and you're trying to do it. There are going to be things that slip through the crevice. There are going to be things that you simply aren't qualified to do no matter what you think. You're not qualified to do it, but you're doing the best you can. And it's stretching you in directions and places and spaces that if you weren't meant to be stretched, and now here you are. And all of these things come out of this idea that I don't have to adhere to traditionalism. Now, the black man has a responsibility to make sure he stays in a place where he's uh, accessible where he impacts and influences what goes on in the environments where his children reside and it's his responsibility it's his responsibility not to put himself in a situation where he can get removed from that environment I understand the dynamic. I understand uh, a lot of the ways that we think, but it's our responsibility to impart upon the younger minds the importance of seeing beyond the moment, the importance of seeing beyond what seems like something that is just astronomically offensive and needs to be addressed to realize that addressing it in the wrong way could change your life forever and something that you will never truly recover from if you're not careful and all of the other things we've got to start to see the long game we don't everything is about doing what you want to do feeling how you want to feel acting how you want to act and nobody's looking beyond the moment to ask a question of what the outcome looks like that's what i do uh, for a living. I measure and project outcomes. I influence outcomes. I sit up and I study. I develop. I practice. I do all these things so that I can not only predict outcomes, I can influence outcomes, and I can literally shift and change outcomes by understanding what creates them. And that's the beauty of actually being engaged. And the thing is, we've got so much that are, that is going on within our communities that we are not addressing that. It has gotten to a point that everybody's running them up and everybody's complaining about it while simultaneously co-signing the behavior that creates it. And nobody wants to listen. Everybody wants to be able to do and say what they want to say because they think that's power they think that's freedom and what they don't realize is the more we become a dissected people the more diluted the power we do have the more vulnerable we become and the more targets will be placed on us because they are already preparing to replace us the border is open for a reason. 
Um, you should be educating yourself on what's happening at the border. It's open for a reason. Our responsibility is to understand how things work for us and against us, what we need to be doing, what we don't need to be doing, who we need to be aware of. Um, and it comes from being willing to step outside of what we've always done and look at what needs to be done. <coughs> On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You know, I could talk about this all day. And I'll probably actually get in here where I'm supposed to be unwinding and be talking about it some more. Uh, because, again, there's some brilliant minds in here. I don't just hang around with anybody. The guys in here are sharp. Uh, we are really, truly putting our heads together to try to come up with solutions. And some of the things that frustrate our efforts our own people um, like I said I love my people and I've always fought for my people it is all it is definitely it definitely has not always been kind to me but I've always stayed the course uh, I will continue to do everything I can with everything that's going on in my life but I will press until there's nothing left in me uh, it's just the way I'm built but I can't do it by myself. So again, I'm asking you guys to support us. But I'm also asking you to take into consideration what's being shared. Um, I don't do this for fun. I don't do this so I can be seen. <clears throat> I done had a life where I was seen and I was the guy and all that bull crap. And nothing fulfilling about it, but a lot of wasted time and energy. I won't say it wasn't fun but a lot of wasted time and energy. I'm not here for that. I'm here to be effective. I'm here to set a standard. I'm here to issue a challenge. I'm here to take this thing as far as I possibly can before I pass the baton. And I'm now measuring those I can pass the baton to. Uh, look, on that note, I'm about to get out of here. You guys, thank you for dropping in. And you have an unbelievable remainder of your day.